Hey there, how you doing? My name's Drew, and today we're going to be talking about how to get started using the GeoGebra 3D calculator. If you are a high school or a college student taking something like a multivariable calculus class, or an instructor teaching something like a multivariable calculus class, or if you're just like me and you like messing around with 3D stuff because you think it's fun, then the GeoGebra 3D calculator is the best tool. It lets you visualize all these fun 3D objects like graphs of functions and surfaces and curves and things like that. And it gives you the ability to like really explore your curiosity and kind of experiment and learn how things work in 3D, which is super cool. So this video is going to be just an introduction to the interface, like how it works, how to visualize graphs of functions and how to visualize surfaces. Things that you'll probably want to be doing pretty early on when you're first learning about three dimensional geometry and calculus. All right, let's hop into it. All right, so when you first open GeoGebra 3D, you will be greeted by this screen. It's got the 3D view on the right and this thing, I'm gonna call this the input bar on the left. I don't actually know what it's called, but this is where you're gonna put in all of the things that you would like to see in the 3D view. So let's get started. Let's, uh, let's draw the graph of a function. How about one of my favorite functions to use as an example pretty much for everything is f of xy equals x squared plus y squared. You type it in pretty much just using your keyboard. Uh, you use the caret key, uh, which I is what, shift six, you use shift six on the keyboard to get exponents. I'll note that if you would rather not use your keyboard or if you're on a mobile device, there's this little button in the bottom left corner that will bring up a, uh, a keyboard that you can use to enter exponents a little bit easier. So um, as soon as you type it in, and even actually as you're typing, GeoGebra will draw the graph of that function for you. And you can click to rotate the view, get different viewpoints on it, really kind of check it out. If you press and hold the shift key on your keyboard, and click, you can slide around the view. And actually, if you hold the shift key, click once, and then click and drag, you can move the viewpoint up and down too. So you can kind of adjust what's being shown to get the best vantage point on whatever it is you're trying to draw. Back to the input bar for a second. Uh, GeoGebra kind of tries its best to guess at what you want it to do. So actually, I typed in f of x, y equals that function. I didn't actually have to do that. I could have just typed in the right hand side of the function equation. So let, let's do that. Let's draw another one. Let's draw a sine of x times y. And you'll see it comes in there as soon as you hit enter in the input bar, GeoGebra will just give it a name. Um, and then we, now we have two graphs drawn here. Uh, a few things. First, let's hide our first graph by clicking the circle on the left here. Um, you'll notice, and this will happen a fair amount whenever you're trying to draw something that's got like a lot of variation it's got like a lot of close together peaks something like this uh, graph it geogebra struggles a little bit uh, something you can do to help that is well you could zoom in i'm using the mouse wheel on my mouse you can also click the little plus and minus buttons here to zoom in and out also every object that you would have in the input bar over here has a settings menu you can click the three dots and then click settings you can kind of explore here you can change things like the color and the way this is drawn uh, something that I'll just point out real quick is that if you go to style and level of detail and click quality, okay, it got like a little better. Also, for things like this, I tend to not like this gray uh, XY plane being drawn here. You can hide that by clicking the settings menu in the top right here and unchecking the plane. And then you have the graph of that function. All right, so that's functions uh, of two variables. You really just type in the formula in the input bar and GeoGebra will do its best to draw the graph for you. All right, let's hide that graph. Let's reset the view by pressing the home button here. And let's talk about surfaces. Usually when we're thinking about surfaces in three-dimensional geometry, we're thinking about like equations, things represented by equations involving X, Y, and Z, like a sphere. So let's put one of those in. I'll type in x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals six. Boom, and as soon as I hit enter, it gives the sphere a name, equation or eq1, and it draws it here. Great, we can, we can zoom in, we can kind of rotate around. Just some terminology, this surface here, the ones that you would define with an equation are called implicit surfaces. And GeoGebra kind of is, is pretty restrictive about which implicit surfaces it'll let you draw. In fact, I'm not sure it will let you draw anything that is not a plane or uh, what I would call a quadric surface, something where you're only using x squared, y squareds, and z squareds in the equation. What I mean that by that is if I try to draw the surface x cubed plus y squared plus z squared equals one, you saw it like trying to guess what I was doing while I was typing it out, but like once I get to the full equation and hit enter, it tells me 
it's undefined. It doesn't like it. Um, so it like only tries to draw certain types of surfaces. But that ends up being pretty okay. I find that um, when we're first learning about surfaces and stuff like that, we only really need to restrict ourselves to these quadric surfaces. And so there you go. Anytime you want to draw a surface, you can try typing in its equation into the input bar. If it's a simple enough surface, then GeoGebra will probably draw it for you. If not, it'll give you that undefined message. I mentioned before that we could draw a plane, so let's draw the plane x plus y plus z equals equals 1. Boom. All right, so it's drawn this plane here in blue. Nice. And the last thing I want to show you for this video is that when you have two implicit surfaces, things that uh, are drawn in kind of this like solid color with like the faded edges, um, two of these implicit surfaces, uh, GeoGebra will let you compute their intersection. So here we have a sphere and a plane. They intersect along this circle. If we wanted to grab just the circle, then we can go over to the input bar and type in intersect. And you can see as I'm typing, it's giving me a lot of uh, kind of autocomplete suggestions here. You can explore these if you want. We're going to just use the first one for now, uh, the one that's finding the intersection of two objects. So I'll type open parentheses. And then I just need to type in, well, I, one way to do it is to type in the equations that we use, x squared plus y squared equals 6, comma, x plus y plus z equals 1. If I do that and hit enter, this changes. We'll talk about this another time, like what's going on here. Um, but over in the 3D view, you'll see that now we have this blue circle that is the intersection of the plane and the sphere. Nice. If we wanted to just show the circle, we could hide the plane and hide the sphere. And then we have the circle here. It's, it's kind of subtle, but this is actually a little bit filled in. If I want to fix that, I can go to the settings for this object, hit the color tab, and then set its opacity, how transparent it is, uh, to zero. Close that, and then we're just looking at the circle rather than the filled in disk. And just real quick, there is a, actually a quicker way to do what I just did. So let's hide this blue circle for a second. If I type in intersect, instead of putting in the equations for both of those surfaces, I can use their handles, use the names that GeoGebra gave them, which are EQ1 and EQ2. You notice that when I do that, it does the exact same thing. It's just finding the intersection of this sphere and this plane. And that's it. That's all I wanted to show you for this first video. I'm planning on making a few more. The next one's gonna be about how to use sliders. They're a way to kind of manipulate objects in GeoGebra that really let you do some like visualization things that you could definitely not do with pen and pencil. They're really cool. But if you have any ideas or if you have questions or if you have things that you know you want to do but aren't sure how in GeoGebra, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll take a look. So there we go, end of video one. Happy GeoGebraing. Thanks for playing along. I'll see you in the next one.